Hello everyone. In the last class, we learned about the mechanism of interaction of drugs with their targets. In simpler terms, we learned about the answer to the question as to how do these drugs work. But in today's class, we will learn answer to a different question, and that is, what do these drugs do when they enter our bodies? In scientific terms, the therapeutic action or effects of drugs. Now, what is this therapeutic action or effect? A term which we have been using even in our previous videos. So let me define it for you. A therapeutic action or effect is a biological response which is beneficial or useful to us, and this response is produced when a treatment or a drug is given to you. So this class marks the beginning of a discussion about the therapeutic effects of some few important classes of drugs, and today we will learn about. Antacids and antihistamines. So, friends, last night I had a lot of French fries and pizza. But while I was going to bed, I felt a burning sensation in my stomach, chest, and windpipe. And today morning, when I woke up, I had a sore throat. So, what do you think happened? Have you also ever suffered the same problem? So, to understand that, I went to my doctor and I was diagnosed with the problem of acidity. Now let me explain what is this problem of acidity. Actually, our stomach already contains acid of pH 1.5 to 3.5. This acid is useful to digest the food that we eat. However, heavily fried food and junk food causes excess secretion of acid in our stomach. This excess acid sometimes enters into our windpipe and causes a burning sensation. Sometimes this excess acid also eats up the walls of the stomach, causing stomach ulcers. To combat this problem of acidity, doctors used to prescribe drugs called antacids. Antacids normally are bases like sodium hydrogen carbonate or mixture of aluminium or magnesium hydroxide. However, sodium hydrogen carbonate is highly soluble in water, and as we all know, our stomach has an aqueous environment. So, the sodium hydrogen carbonate does not stop at just neutralizing the excess acid. It increases the pH beyond seven and makes our stomach alkaline. This triggers the production of even more acid. So, the sodium hydrogen carbonate may be helpful momentarily, but worsens the situation in the long run. Therefore, metal hydroxides, which are insoluble, are far better than sodium hydrogen carbonate because they do not increase the pH of the stomach beyond seven. Normally, weak bases like magnesium hydroxide, magnesium carbonate, magnesium tricilicate, aluminium phosphate, and aluminium hydroxide gel are employed as antacids. Now, here a natural question arises as to why do we only use weak bases? The reason for this is that strong bases fully dissociate in an aqueous environment and easily increase the pH beyond seven. Now let me give you an example of antacids from our day-to-day -day lives. Have you ever seen somebody drinking a pink-colored syrupy liquid when they are suffering from acidity? Well, this pink-colored syrupy liquid is called milk of magnesia, which is nothing but magnesium hydroxide. Now here a natural question arises, and that is, if these drugs treat acidity completely, then why do we get acidity again and again when we stop taking these drugs? The answer to this question lies in the fact that these drugs or bases just manage the symptoms of acidity. They never address the root cause of acidity. That is why you get acidity again and again. And if this acidity persists for a long period of time, this leads to peptic ulcers. And these peptic ulcers in advanced stages can be life-threatening. And the last resort at that moment of time is just to remove the affected part of stomach. So it is highly dangerous if you get acidity for a longer period of time. So scientists were in search of a permanent solution to this problem of acidity. A major breakthrough in the treatment of hyperacidity came when a chemical called histamine was discovered. As you can clearly see, histamine is nothing but a primary amine, and this histamine chemical stimulates the secretion of pepsin or hydrochloric acid in our stomachs. So, a drug called cimetidine was discovered. What this drug essentially does is it prevents the interaction of histamine with its receptors present in the stomach wall. This prevents the secretion of hydrochloric acid into the stomach. 
As you can clearly see, both histamine and cimetidine contain a common structural feature and that is this heterocyclic ring. And this heterocyclic ring is also present in the amino acid histidine. And histamine got its name from this amino acid histidine. Now, the structural similarity between cimetidine and histamine causes cimetidine to competitively block histamine receptors present in the walls of the stomach and in turn this decreases the secretion of acid into stomach thus solving the problem of acidity. Now this drug cimetidine was one of the most popular drugs used for acidity until another drug called ranitidine was discovered. If you notice carefully, ranitidine and cimetidine both have a common structural feature and that is a sulfur side chain. These common structural features point towards a common fact and that is drugs having common structural features have similar effects on our bodies. Now another class of drugs are also known which act as antacids and they are called proton pump blockers. The main function of these drugs is to inhibit certain cells present in the stomach from pumping acid into the stomach. The examples of these drugs are lanzoprazole, omeprazole and pentoprazole. With this, we end our discussion on antacids moving forward to our next class of drugs. Now let's come to a class of drugs which reduces the effect of the chemical histamine in our bodies. And because these drugs work against histamine, they are naturally called antihistamines. As I have already discussed previously, histamine is nothing but a primary amine which has a heterocyclic link common with the amino acid histidine. This chemical histamine has varied functions in our body. One of these functions I have already mentioned and that is to stimulate the secretion of an enzyme called pepsin. This pepsin enzyme helps in the digestion of proteins in our bodies. Histamines stimulates the secretion of hydrochloric acid in our stomachs which helps in the digestion of the food that we eat. Not only this, histamine is a potent vasodilator, which simply means that histamine opens up or dilates blood vessels. It affects the muscles present in the walls of veins and arteries. It prevents these muscles from tightening and walls from narrowing down so that blood can flow easily through these vessels. Now sometimes histamine has quite opposite effects on different parts of our body. For instance, it contracts the smooth muscles present in bronchi and gut but on the other hand relaxes the muscles present in the walls of fine blood capillaries. Now, do you remember when you caught cold and your nose was completely blocked and you were unable to breathe? Well, let me tell you that this nasal congestion is also because of histamine. Not only this, your allergic response of continuous sneezing because of pollen grains, pollutants and dust particles is also because of histamine. So drugs which interfere with such natural actions of histamine by competing with histamine for binding site of receptors on which histamine exerts its effect are called antihistamines. Synthetic drugs like bromphenyramine commonly called as dimetane or dimetap and terephenidine commonly called as seldane are potent anti-allergic drugs. Not only these, there are other anti-allergic drugs also called phenyramine maleate, diphenhydramine and citrazine. Now here I want to highlight a certain point and that is the previously discussed antacid drugs also work on histamine receptors, right? And these anti-allergic drugs also work on histamine receptors? Then here a natural question arises and that is why don't these anti-allergic drugs have any effect on the secretion of acid in our stomach? Well, the answer to this is fairly simple and that is anti-allergic drugs do not bind to the receptors present in our stomach which are responsible for acid secretion. They actually bind to the receptors present in the respiratory system which are responsible for our allergic response and because these receptors are different set of receptors, the effect is also different. Now, in this class, we have learned about the effects which drugs like antacids and antihistamines have on our bodies. In the next class, we will learn about drugs which interact with nerve receptors in our bodies. But before that, 
Let's do a quick recap of what we have learned today. Therapeutic effect. It is a response which is beneficial or useful for us after a treatment or a drug is given to us. Antacid. An antacid is a substance which neutralizes stomach acidity and is used to relieve heartburn, indigestion or an upset stomach. They are of three types. Weak bases like magnesium hydroxide, aluminium hydroxide gel, sodium bicarbonate. Histamine blockers like ranitidine and cimetidine. And proton pump blockers like lenzoprazole, omeprazole and pentoprazole. Drugs which interfere with natural actions of histamine by competing with histamine for binding sites of receptors where histamine exerts its effects are called antihistamines. Synthetic drugs like bromphenyramine, commonly called as dimetap or dimetane and terephenidine, commonly called as seldane, act as antihistamines and are used as anti-allergic drugs.